The way life goes, my sister, my bros, come together, let's go on my aboriginals. Be proud of who you are, no one can take that away. This is a message for the young and the old. Hello, uh, I'm Bart Willoughby. Uh, this is our, our uh, second podcast. Uh, we have Jason and we have Shirley. Jason works as a professional stage stagehand. Um, uh, w- works in a lot of uh, plays. And he's a funny man. And uh, yeah, he's a very funny man. <laughs> Confused man, too. Uh, very, very, uh, and we have Shirley, he's, uh, he's very serious at being funny. <laughs> seriously funny. Seriously, seriously funny. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. Shirley, hood in the house. How yeah. are you out there? Yeah. No, it's a, it's a pleasure. Uh, and um, I've worked with uh, both of these uh, entities, um, uh, through, through my uh, career. Uh, Jason, I work with quite a few, and also Shirley, uh, we've done quite a few tours, and, and, uh, 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 and it must be, it must be weird, um, because you, you uh, Shirley, because you, 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 you have to, Look at it, everything is funny. Yeah, well, uh, it, it is a funny thing. And uh, I, I like the comedy mind mm. that you have to think of something funny when you see all this crazy stuff that happens, and especially the injustice that happens yep. that happens to us. Yep. It's like um, how do we deal with that? How do we heal ourselves? And as a community I found out through laughter mm. and our sense of humour... Mm. Let's dive in there. And so I love to do comedy through the eyes of, you know, black fella living in today's society in Australia. Yep. And I thank goodness for the comedy mind because some of the crap I see out there is crazy and I can naturally process it as a fu- something funny to hear yeah, right, yeah, for yeah. all of us. Well, yeah. It's funny how, you know, because a lot of people try and challenge uh, themselves, especially being funny and I love my comedy and um, how hard it is to to be that person, you know, to take a lot of, like, um, what you see, depression, anger and all these things mm. and then to mould it into something funny. That's that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's right. From tragedy, and we got tragic lives out there, from tragedy comes the best comedy, yep. you know, and... Thank goodness I've been blessed both styles, so I've got material. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. If 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 um, uh, if I died and went to heaven, if I get a chance, um, <laughs> uh, I'd love you to speak at because I, uh, I I'd, I'd want them to smile at life instead of um, playing some sad music and cry. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's, that's a way to do it. So that's your next gig to Uncle Bart's funeral. Oh, <laughs> I know. Please don't say that. And, and like, um, I know Bart, but it, it, it was, like, at a few different places I've got to be able to speak and mm. sometimes the laughter is necessary in our sadness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? So. Yeah, well, that, well, that's the yep. thing with comedy. Black, black people are generally the funniest... People, not only in this country, but all around the world. And mm. why is that? Why, why, why are it's an adversity? That's right. And Jason, yeah, yeah. Jason Tamaru, right Tamaru, here. Tamaru, right here. Yeah, that's right in the house. It was um, his idea that got me into comedy. Back in the day, hey, you came up with an idea, came to the barbecue, and said, "I got this idea. How come barbecue. we've got? Yeah, a barbecue. It was a barbecue. Yeah, yeah. and um, and." How, um, how come we have got so many funny people within our families and everything? We've survived through our sense of humour. We're in the capital of Melbourne, which is the Melbourne comedy capital that's, of the world. That's right, the entertainment how, world, isn't that's it? That's right. And how come we haven't got many stand-up comedians? And I remember going, OK, then, brother, put me down for a statistic. I'll come in. But then I found out I, I love comedy. So been wow. at it ever since. And yeah, that's, that's so crazy because... Jason, you're such a visionary. You um, mm. and you always think outside the box 
just like a lot of people I know too. And um, <laughs> you just, I think you're just like me too. I've got, I've got ADD and I always think about mm. things straight away and um, raw stuff. And you're one of those people. That, yep. You're one of those dudes that look at other people and think, oh, you should do this or you should mm. do that. I think, I, think it, I think it comes a lot to do with my education or no education. Mm. You know, I reckon, you know, growing up um, in this country, it's tough. Yep. And I guess uh, myself, I really fought against the education system mm. and um, it wasn't really working for me. And school was a place not only to have friends but also to have fights and... and also tell everybody who I was <coughs> and everybody else is. So sc- school wasn't a really kind place for me. So when it come to um, getting knowledge and education, um, people get it from the books, I get it from life experiences. And from life experiences, you know, especially in, in blackfella culture, we get a lot of our experience and history gets handed down verbally through our oral history. So, you know, Growing up around family and mob, you know, you, you get there to, you know, you get to listen mm-hmm. to um, a lot of people, and I guess they they, they sort of shape and form a, 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 a like a call. Some people call it a well, but I call it like a billabong, you know, watering hole, mm-hmm. and that's a watering hole where um, I guess all these good ideas, all this magic, all this culture, all this life comes from, and and I guess I sort of fish, you know, or go to that. You know, billabong or watering hole mm. to get um, ideas, and, so, and and from there it, it sort of connects and, to others. Hopefully, so not all the time, though. So what you're saying is, you, you don't think out of the box. You think out of the planet. Yeah, I think out of the planet. People <laughs> people say that, but maybe you think outside the watering hole. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. inside the watering hole. <laughs> That's a good hole. one. That's a good one. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just um, crazy to see, as a young fella myself, to see yeah. so much entertainment out there. I mean, when there wasn't any opportunity, I mean, Bart, you know, Uncle Bart and Dad and people like you guys oh, that started the front line, you know, the music o- and entertainment. Well, the only, the only places you could play it was a campfire uh, or, or cab rays. Mm. Uh, each one, a fight would break out. Um, and so uh, um, there wasn't that many places to 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 to, to play at, mm. uh, but we did play a lot of um, private dudes, you know. Like, uh, yeah. Actually, I remember we played at this bikey thing, and we got about twenty bikies uh, got up on the microphone going, uh, singing a reggae song, which is. Uh, uh, Unusual to see mm. because they love their heavy rock and get your motor around and sort of um, stuff. Yeah, um, uh, reggae is too, too emotional. It's too. Yeah. It's, it hits you in a, in a certain spot, reggae yeah. does, doesn't it? Uh, um, rock allows you to flaunt your stuff, you know? Yeah, it's got a bit of attitude, eh, Bart? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Is that my phone? Sorry, people. Hey, look out. But, um, yeah, hello. That better be money calling. Yeah, um, <laughs> you have just one, one, one thousand cents. Wow, freaky, that's a lot. Congratulations. <laughs> one thousand cents. <clears throat> well, yeah. What I was saying, I'm um, meaning to talk about so much talent out there is um, <clears throat> how much you guys influence a lot of people too in the fields that you're at and, you know, I, I hear them young fellas out there a lot, you know, especially doing the music and stuff. That I, I do a lot of hip-hop and so I like to, and I see a lot of those young people out there and there's a lot of them that, um, you know, look up to you guys too as, as, as who you are. What do you see for our mob? Because I know that once our mob get out of um, the environment that we're in um, and, and start using... Because a lot of them do have a lot of um, confidence and art in them, but they don't know how to get around and to approach other people. What do you think um, young fellas should... I mean, what, what, what could you tell young fellas out there that, you know, feel like that they can't do anything, but f- 
find angles out there to have opportunities. Or, or, because, that's, yeah, it's all about networking, that's, eh? That's, that's weird because um, yeah. I heard this story about this greyhound dog. Yeah. And um, uh, what, what, it, what his job was to do was to chase the, the rabbit, you know, mm. to go around. Yeah? Uh, one day um, uh, it was outside, the dog, and, and it saw the rabbit and it started chasing after it. And, but when it caught it, it didn't know what to do. Uh, so what I'm what I'm what I'm saying is um, mm. when when a lot of people who play sports or musicians that that um, uh, are trying to achieve goals, uh, I, I think what happens is uh, um, the focus is too much on that instead of. On the chase instead of, like, what happens when you it, get there. It, instead of trying to, 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 uh, to, to actually um, uh, go on some sort of walkabout and work out uh, the wonders of the universe, uh, which is, um, which is a, a natural way of of uh, uh, growing your mind up uh, so that you can actually look for the right things because you're, you're about to, two things, you're about to write songs that you never heard before mm. and where do you look for them? And, 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 most cases, people would rather go on that road that just takes them to their destiny instead of um, uh, doing the hard yakka and finding out how to write songs that come from you that explain about, about what you're looking at. Yeah? Mm. And so, uh, um, so uh, a, a lot of people intend to lose the the magic of 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 uh, music yeah. uh, same thing as you wouldn't think that a painter would paint wrong yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah that's but, right <laughs> but there's a lot of painters out there that get it wrong yeah yeah but there's some painters out there you just go wow yeah. mm. and so that's the same thing that happens in music. There are a lot of people who, who have this artwork, but it, it, there's something missing. Mm. Yeah? And, and they spend their life not one, uh, uh, trying to work out why they can't do it. And, mm. and it's a simple thing. If you, if you practice and do your homework, you will get there. Mm. Yeah? That's well, yeah. right. You know, we've got our we've got our culture that sort of we can always go back to, and we should always mm. put forward in us. I think that is a lot of the X factor too that comes out in our shows, mm. in our messages, mm. in our style, and because the world hasn't had all the opportunities to see it, mm. we have grown. But in these last generations, we're getting stronger. Mm. We have been the longest culturally practised people mm. and we're storytellers, yep. you know. So I always think go back to our culture and bring that out. That helps with just yeah. talent, connecting with the community and also getting some of our words and messages out. Yep. Mm. And th just going on your point about longevity, uh, Bar, uh, you know, and yeah. as in people being, I guess overnight sensations, if you want to use that, uh, overnight uh, sensations can only go so far. Mm. Yeah. You know, like the old cl uh, the cliche or the ex saying goes, the higher you climb, the more you get exposed. Yeah, yeah. So um, those people, will, those overnight sensations, most of them don't make it in this business. Mm -hmm. well, the, the, the sad thing about it 
the, the sad thing about it is they don't they don't they don't get to go on their their walk about and they don't get to work out the wonders of the universe you know which are which are uh, I think which is one of the most amazing things about the walk about and the dreaming well that, that's the thing mm. Mark. You, you know you talk about the walk about and you imagine you know I, I think about those war mm. all the time every day and you think about the walk about you know my vision of that mm. thoughts of that is walk you know walking through bush watching and listening mm. but really absorbing everything that's in there everything. that's really feed yeah. on everything that's in there that helps shape your own identity you yeah. Know? yeah you can also do that mm, that's true yeah. you can also do that walking in the city you know like cuz what what you do is um you go uh you go oh yeah my grandfather talked about this place where the the such and such came from, huh? mm. uh, which a lot of people who grew up in that area don't know about. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And it is, though, it's absorbing everything. You know, uh, you're so right, Jason, because I do the same thing and you write music too. You, know, you, know, you see everything around you in the environment that you're in uh, and you're sort of moulding it together in a song, well, we uh, are, and, uh, and you guys are doing it. Yeah. Uh, as comedians and as showmen, yeah. which I really admire because I look at that and I always think like, oh, man, you know, like when I do film clips and stuff like that, I always think, what would my mob think or what would, or what could I put together where it make our mob think, oh, yeah. Now, this fellow's sort of r- r- putting in, you know, remembering spirit, bringing spirit back to our people sort of thing. And, yeah, I think you're so right. It is. It's sort of like meditating, eh? It's sort of like we've got walkabout, but then if we sat and we listened to everything around us, mm. you know, you, it is. It's meditating. And you don't know what you get out of it. There's something that you get out of it later on that you don't even realise, I reckon, too, mm-hmm. as, a, as a black fella as well. Well, we, you know, the places that we're at, we know a lot of posit- positivity, but there's also a lot of negativity. You mm. know, we, we yeah. sort of like sponges and absorb it. And yeah. I guess uh, what the trick is is to try and um, eliminate some of those negativities. It's all part of life. Yeah. You can't say no to it, yeah. but you can learn from those. You might make mistakes. Mm. You might see negativity that will go down the wrong track. But it's it's important that you acknowledge it, mm. learn from the experience, and move on. Because it's all and about the experience at the end of the day. At the end, that's right. And it's the the weird thing is, um, uh, uh, we as as Aboriginal people, one of one of our one of our gifts is observing. Now, if anybody knows. About the Australians, it's us because we've been observing for gen- generations. So, mm-hmm. what are we looking at when we study them? Well, what what we do is we look at the pros and cons. What, in other words, what works and what doesn't work. And so when we look at our system, we can see that everything works mm. because we're putting back and, and we don't disturb the ground. Mm. And on this side over here, um, uh, uh, they don't have that... that, that uh, that, uh, what would you call it? Um, a wider experience of life. A, a character that comes from the dreaming. Yeah. Right? Mm. That makes up our character. Yeah, well, that, uh, that, that, that's... I, I hear what you're saying, because uh, it's, like, it's like something I... Uh, this, I, I, this reflecting now, like, you have had a hard time at school and I guess you have, you have questions and which uh, needs an answer and they get... St- I either get a cross or a tick and it's only like one answer to that particular question and if you haven't answered the way that they want, want you to answer it, you're going to get a cross. But, well, that's, but that, I realise, like, in our way, we've uh, got multiple answers to one question mm, and yep. all those answers are correct. 
Well, we we genetically mm. uh, connected to all that was to all that was was beautiful. Uh, in other words, the the communications between animals, the 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 love for flora and fauna, the 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 way that they uh, gathered the food together, uh, the way that they the animals took part in being free mm. uh, within that land. So, so everything is almost pointing to to uh, to a place that's beyond Garden of Eden. Mm. And the reason why it's beyond Garden of Eden is because these guys destroyed it. Mm. So, so we we come from it, so we know what it smells like, how fresh it is, and how beautiful it can get. Mm. Mm, that's right. Yeah? And when people talk about, like, they see Aboriginal people walking around the bush and they go, oh, they're doing walkabout. Mm. It's like that term walkabout doesn't express the spirituality that we're actually doing. Mm. Thinking, smelling, hearing, you know, feeling our earth. Mm. You know, that's really important and, and that ends up being us. Mm. That's our culture, you know. And that's not expressed enough, our spirituality in this country. Mm. Our kids think about how do sticks come back, mm. you know, and then they get like called useless and dumb and all this stuff because they don't know at Bert Kurt. Come on, we need to rethink our system of learning. We've got a lot of kids trying to get into the education system, but they get bored. Mm. And it's because a lot of our spiritual side, our cos mm. cosmos thinking that hasn't been sort of pushed up and yeah. and encouraged as we go in. And mm. I notice within the arts we get to do that and push our expression. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's a, you know, it's great to, that we're talking about it because I guess the workplaces that, well, I know that I've worked in, let's call it, I call it their mainstream workplaces and they've got years of years of being shaped in a way that comes from a real European Western style of making work or making art and mm -hmm. and... I know myself when working in these places, it's, it's almost it's super challenging because these uh, systems that they have in there, uh, that, that are, that I guess they're traditional Western s systems, they're really, really locked in and it's hard to sort of break down. But it is possible and that's what I tr tend to do or try to do with um, me physically by being in there but also through the work that I do and the work that I bring into the whole place. It's almost... What we're trying to do is indigenise the, the, the place where we're at or de, even decolonise the place that we're in so it's more accommodating um, not only for, um, for our people, mm. for, for everybody else that's so not structured in that old tri uh, so-called traditional style of Western um, learning and expression. Mm. That's right. Uh, yeah. brrr, and, and also um, we're, we're actually important because um, th there's going to be... A Time where the uh, the the wife are going to go say, what, what's this? And they need someone that comes from that 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 calmness to to explain what they're looking at. In other words, um, uh, in the whole history of um, Australians being here, uh, not one has looked at a black fella that's in the bush and goes, gee, it looks like where he is. Mm. Huh? I know we, they always saw us and then went, <laughs> quick, they better go yeah. and get them and take yeah. them up to, to the church where yeah. there are civilised yeah. things yeah. going on. Not, I not, say civilised yeah. in a mm. quoted, yeah. you know, fingers, but it's like... Yeah. They don't appreciate our connection to the well, land. Well, mm. they don't. They, they, they don't know how to express the how beautiful compassion is. Mm. That's it. Uh, uh? Exactly. So, like that. so, 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 uh, um, if you've got no compassion about it, 
You're not going to say, Jesus, they look beautiful where they are. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you got, you got ignorant yeah, people like that talk. today. So. Yeah. It's like my friend come back from Alice Springs, you know, and he's like, hey, man, your, your families and all them, man. And, and he wasn't being a certain way. He was just saying, like, man, they sit around everywhere, you know. They sit having a thing over there. They sit over there. I said, brother, before those shops were there, they were sitting there. We were sitting, they were sitting there, there too. for That's a long right. time. <laughs> and he looked at me and he goes, "Oh no, no, I didn't mean disrespect." And I'm like, oh, so "I know where you're coming from, mm. and I see what you're seeing too." Uh, That's yeah. it. Some people, when they see Aboriginal people drinking in the park, they go, "We got a problem." When they see white fellas and they got their sipping in the park, mm. their champagne, they go, "Oh, we got a party." Mm. Mm. It's a different or, mentality. Or, mm. or, or, or um, if they see black fellas. Drinking in the park, uh, or, or this other word can pop up. Ah, we still got them. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, wow, that's a really touchy subject too, and what we're talking about. And I love this because it, even as this is our second episode, Uncle, mm. this is this is cool, and I'm very proud to be amongst unbelievable well, that, people right now. That's, Jeez. that's that's really weird because. Um, what makes up our system now is all the black fellas that didn't hang out with other black fellas. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. we had the stolen generations uh, that have been taken away and sort of almost pushed to assimilate and put all the um, white values, Western values higher than our own values. Mm-hmm. And that was just... Like, from young time, mm. we were taught to sort of stay within the concrete, stay yep. all that. Mm. What they don't know is that concrete is going to be coming off soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all our country. Mm. When we're riding over hills on the trams mm. in the city, that's country. Yeah, that's you know? right. Nam and, yeah, and that's what I want to just acknowledge the country we're mm. on at the moment. Yes, Probably. that's right. Acknowledge the country that we're on and all the um, our elders past and present and... Um, Acknowledge um, local custodians uh, of this land too. So th- 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 that's that's weird because um, because back in the 18th century, even most probably the late 17th century, um, that's where the saying began. Oh, they had the good black fellas. Oh, you oh, hear that they a lot. The bad, they had the bad <laughs> black fellas. You hear that a lot. Now that's been going on for nearly 200 years. Oh, that's the good black fellas. That's the bad black fellas. That's the good black fellas. Now, what's happened now after years and years and years of, of that's a good black fella, that's a bad black fella, now it, it's become part of the white fella's um, uh, uh, picture. Yeah. And it's been going on for that long that they don't know they might be actually making the wrong Step. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And so, so w- what I'm saying is that all the beautiful people that we so-called have there now are actually chosen by the white fellas who said, "Ah, oh, they're the good blacks." Mm. Mm. You see, mm. and that's that's a. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm what you're talking there, Bart. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I think about this a lot. And and you know, I, I want to. Firstly, tell, especially the young people out there, having an education is a good thing. Mm. I don't want, to, want you to steer away from getting a good so-called uh, education. Mm. You know, it's really important. But also having Aboriginal blackfell education yep. is super important. So this will um, better inform you in um, um, what you're doing. But just getting onto your point, what you are talking well, about before, it, Bart, is, it, is with it, the... Um, with, with, within that um, school system, you know, you, you, you sort of, you go through these levels of um, um, when you sort of graduate. And when you graduate, you pass a test, they, they give you a title. Uh, and there's, there's so many titles that you can get if you pass the, the appropriate yeah, test. Right. And what, what that sets you up for, it, sets you, it gives you, a, a, I guess, a title. Mm. But what it also does, it gives you... Uh, a, a so-called better place in the world that we're living in. Mm. Yeah. The, so the more white education, mm-hmm. more of a title that you've got with you, you're going to get rewarded for that 
and you're definitely going financially, and you're absolutely going to get um, you're going to get um, paid more money and more opportunities. But um, if you're on the other side, like I was saying before, with, with say the out of school education, just going to your point of being um, bad, there's a bad black fellas. Well, if you haven't got that, I guess that education or that title beside you and you, you, you maybe speak out against politics or culture mm. or against, just against the whole um, uh, so-called system out there, you're seen as a bad black fella. You're seen as a radical, someone who's, yeah. mm. who's disrupting, yeah. someone who's yeah. against yeah. the system, yeah. you know, when yeah. really that's not what we're all about. No, we're right. trying to, we're, what we're trying to do is bring, bring another, um, mm. uh, uh, another language, another thought, another spirit to, to, to the landscape and hopefully um, having both sides makes it a better world, man. That, that, that's right. So what, uh, what I'm also trying to say too is that um, the, 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 the technique does not work. And so, so we're at a level where we need the pure of pure thinking uh, to to the to the most radical to sit down and with compassion and work it out logically. Mm. Uh, at the moment, uh, what's stopping us is the phrase "good black." Mm. Bad black. Yeah, that's a good that, example. That, that should not be. Um, in, in fact, that doesn't really mean anything. There is no such thing as a good black and a bad black. But when you when you're in when you, we, yeah. we've turned it around, if you call it bad, that mm. means you're good. If you're black, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, right. Right. that's right. So we, we turn it all around, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what we do. Yeah. So if you if you call bad, that means you're deadly. Yeah, but yeah. we were talking about that with Sheryl Lee. You know, he sees the see <laughs> bad stuff and see, turns it into something funny. <laughs> see, they they need <laughs> they need our way of technique of thinking. That's because, right. Because because we're not entrapped with a good black and a bad black. Because mm. mm, wow. yeah. we don't even think like there's yeah. a good white and there's a bad white. Yeah. We don't think like that. We're just politicians. We just say government. <laughs> we just say government officials or, or exactly. <laughs> yeah. But if, if, if we pinpoint that group, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if we see see, see a uh, a bad white person, uh, we, we we can sense it. We can see it. Uh, mm. um, but when we meet uh, an entity or a human being, um, that's that's uh, that's like one on one, uh, which is totally mind blowing. That's what Australia is missing. It's uh, here's an example too. I was um, I remember Rob Thomas came down Matchbox Twenty mm-hmm. you know, a few years ago, yep. and he said this comment. Oh, I'm going to go and have a drink like an Aboriginal tonight or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. I remember, remember that. that. And yeah. it was a big controversy. Yeah. yeah. And a few people rang up some people and Dad got a home phone call straight away as well. And then Dad said to that person, why don't you get an elder to sit with that person to make it look, you know, to, to, so Rob Thomas didn't look bad as well, you know, so was, they sat and then it was sort of like shook hands and... Because the media sort of took it to another a level, yeah. Yeah, and then black fellas were out there like, "Ah, oh, stuff that fella, man." You know? No, no, they would have. They, yeah. they would have went, "Ah, oh, that's he. Me- he mentioned us." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could have been another thing too. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah, at least I we that, were brought hey, to I the. That. And it starts like yeah. coming back to the good yeah. black, bad black thing. Yeah, yeah. You know? and that's, it, yeah. That's one of the. That's the main thing. That is ripping our country apart. Mm. Which way is that, Bart? Um, it, it's it's uh, it, it's the wrong way. We, we, we're actually family. Yes. Uh, we're not. We're not a good black, a bad black. If he has what he thinks, then sit down and listen to his story, and you'll see why he thinks that way. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's right. Mm. I mean, because we connected too. Oh. The great way of thinking, like, we have such brilliant powers. Like, we are, like you said before, we've got great observation powers. Yep. yep. 
You know, someone That's walks into a room, you can see aunties going off with their eyes and lips, eh? Yeah. Like, they can see everything. And then the other thing we've got is, like, sustainable living powers. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we kept our water yeah. fresh and drinkable and looked after for over 120,000 years. Scientifically, it's written 65,000 years. Yeah. But in 200 years, the Western world has damaged our water, damaged a lot of fish, created havoc on our land and made uh, quite a few of our animals and totems extinct. Mm, mm. You know, so there really is a different way of thinking. Yeah, well, I think, you know, know, just on that too, I think it's got everything to do with colonisation, sis. Mm. Absolutely. You know, what does colonisation do? It sort of rips resources from the land. From the land. It takes all the minerals, it takes its people, it takes its culture, the Mm. language... Every single thing that's there and they even not only take it away, but if they can't move it away, they'll rename it to a, um, a language that's suitable to that colonisation. So mm. colonisation is a ma- major problem in, in the world, I believe. Mm. And it's still sort of, good. like for everybody is sort of a slave today, aren't they? In the workplace, you've got different slaves in, in all different fields you know, yeah. working for some man, you know. Yeah, well, it's it's it's, like, it's a capitalist system, man. Mm. You know, the, the the more the more success, like you get the the more degree that you've got, the more money that you've got, the more such and such you got, you're gonna you know you're gonna do better in this world, you know, supposedly. But supposedly, what, but yeah. what what is that? You know, what exactly. is that? Being successful with money, what's what does that mean? Oh, okay, well, it might make you happy. You might be able to buy some stuff, but from a from a cultural position, mm. what? What's the impact that it has on your own identity, mm. your own culture? Mm. You know, if you if you embrace in this capitalist colonisation type of world, you know. That's yeah, right. Yeah. If you're running yeah. from beeps and buzzes all the way continuously, you're not you're not giving yourself time, yep. and time isn't allowed to stop and like think of what your spirit's doing mm. or who who's important in your life that you should catch up with. You know, it's all just driven to when's payday, how do we get this money, Mm. you know? Yep. And that's very sad because our people have survived for many thousands of years without it. Mm. And we need to get back to that mentality. Yeah. Mm. And and also, um, uh, uh, when when I got into the music industry, um, I heard through the grapevine that a lot of uh, songwriters were looking at how the way that we we would write write songs, mm. okay. So so, uh, and, and not only also not only that too, um, in the way that we we play music. Uh, uh, sadly, those that were um, um, sold out, or not sold out, but were signed up by the record company. Uh, they they could never go on a venture and find out how beautiful music can be can mm. get, mm. and 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 that's that that has to change because music is for everyone. I think it slowly is. What you're talking mm. about too, Uncle. I think it that, slowly is. You see a lot of artists out mm. there that are independent today because yeah. of people like you, and mm. and they see a lot of the um, industry and how much mm. it can um, you know tarnish it. An artist, just like that, you know. A lot of lot of record company people can't even do that. <laughs> and that's <laughs> that's funny. That's yeah. timing. Even Kadiski mm. couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some big names coming up on you. Look at. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was quite, I was quite shocked. Um, well, you had a lot of friends in the field, uh, in all different fields of music. Well, what freaked me out the most was when Prince. Prince done his reggae song. He didn't put no percussion on there. And I just went, Ooh. I just went, what? What? <laughs> and uh, he doesn't need it because he's, he's making it fling anyway. But, um, but that was really weird. I just, I just thought that was, that was weird. But... Who's, who's, you know, sorry to jump in, um, who's you... Who influences you in music, Bart? Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, shit, I was hanging out. When I was 16 years old, I, I met Count Basie, right? Who was uh, that? Count Basie. You know, the, the fellow who wrote all them big hits in the 
fifties and forties. What jazz oh, fella? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You want to work with Bing Crosby and all them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm at Count, Count Basie, and I was only sixteen, and um, uh, uh, I walked up to him, and I think they already talk, uh, played him a couple of songs and that, and he said, uh, "Keep doing what you're doing." Uh, oh, mm. all right, and. And so I was meeting all these really, really fi- famous um, uh, uh, musicians. Dollar Brand, uh, fellow kid, the list just keeps going on and on and on. Uh, Ian Jury was my mate. Uh, we jammed for hours and hours. The guy is a genius on piano. Um, Chico Freeman, uh, he's a jazz musician who, uh, he's one of the first to put circular breathing with saxophone. Mm. Um, yeah, wow. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and uh, 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 just a ama- lot of amazing music. Jackson Brown. Were you, were you influenced by Bob? Bob Marley? Yeah, uh, Bob Marley was the only guy that made me dance and I can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'd be in the mirror there, in the room, <laughs> dancing to Bob Marley. Because <laughs> that's how powerful... His, His music. music was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's the only guy that made me dance, apart from Michael Jackson. And I have to say, I have to put this out there, there there's an artist that we all know, um, most people know out there, that went over to Jamaica and she's seen this book in the museum and it mentioned you and Bob Marley mentioned you yeah. and how he mentioned oh. uh, there was a man from Australia named Bart Willoughby who wrote a song called We Have Survived. Yeah. Boom. So wow. I just wanted to put that out there because I think that's part of Bart's legacy history right there. So And history. And yeah. I'm glad that Bob said that because it's true. It's you true. Know, he, um, your music influence got us to stand up in the days where nobody yeah. else was. Mm. Yeah, like you said, you only had certain venues that you could perform. I mean, you started the movement. Well, well it's, yeah. it's, it's weird because I, I didn't have a clue where I was because I just came out of Boys Up. And so I didn't have a clue where I stand or who I was or, or what was going on. And I'm glad music popped up because uh, it took me on the road. I got to, to check out the wonders of the universe. I, got to, I, I even got to find what I was looking for, which is myself. Mm. And, 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 and more so because... Uh, um, uh, it not only uh, um, was I receiving love from music, um, uh, and it's weird because you can't, you can't, you can't love something that doesn't give you anything back. Yeah? And so, for music to give me love, it's got to be, it's got to be an entity. It's got to be equal both sides. Like if, so. if I was a baby and, and music was an entity and I fell in love with it, that's the same thing. The <laughs> same. Yeah? Well, it does, eh? Um, Uncle Bart's music comes from the heart, doesn't it? I mean, how many songs do we know out there that do you, when, when you... Aboriginal woman, all these mm. amazing mm. songs out there that touch different people yeah. every time. I, I, if I'm talking about Bart, I, it, yeah. it's taking me to a memory when, I, up, when we're doing a gig up in Darwin. Um, in that outdoor space, and I remember um, the call time for sound check was maybe say four o'clock, but Bart was in there at about two o'clock, two thirty, and um, I remember rocking into the venue, and Bart was just going for it on the sticks, you know. I'm like, yo, what's going on here, you know? And um, Bart was up there sweating. <laughs> sweating and banging those sticks so hard on the um on the drum and the skins there, you know, cymbals and just going for it. And I said, yo, Bart, what's going on? What you doing? He goes, I'm I'm putting a message out. I'm putting a message out to the people. And I just straight away when he, he said that, oh like, yo, man. I totally understand what mm. you're saying, man. Yeah. He goes, You watch this tonight, brother. You watch this tonight. And anyway, um, the show come along that night and 
of course, of course, we had a sold out show, but um, <laughs> well, but being an outdoor um, venue. Um, obviously there was being no roof, the sound could escape through the roof. Oh, so out, outside of this venue, we had blackfellas sitting all around this venue. The venue listened to Bart and this group um, performing this cabaret show. And it's something I know, it's something that I've, I've always reflect and remember, Bart. I'll never, mm. I'll never forget that, that time when you're, you're beating that drum, bros. Mm. And, and I, 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 from that moment, I'd see everything you do mm. when you're um, playing your music. You're putting messages out. Us. <laughs> You're putting messages out to all the people out there, man. It's it's really, really powerful and cultural and spiritual, man. And it, it really, really works, you know. And I totally get it, you know. Yeah. Really, right. and from from a producer and I guess um, someone that puts things together, you know, people like yourself help. Mm. You know, really, really, and I feed off that information and really absorb it, and you know, it really helps shape what I do, you know, man. Mm-hmm. So I'm really thankful, brother. Yeah, so am I. I I've look up to you too, and I think exactly. I'll try and think like you, Unc. And yeah, uh, Jason, you really hit it on the head because you are an inspiration, Unc. That's right, and it's been over this long time, too, eh? Yeah, yeah. Been quite a few years now, eh? Well, I, I'm, I'm still in love. Put it that way. <laughs> Boys, <laughs> damn I'm married to the game. <laughs> well, I, I, um, I worked out that that us musicians we're not. We're not very good conspirators. We, we, we don't know how to get a bunch to uh, attack them bunch. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, we, we're just too busy concentrating on music. You know, I, I just want to say um, what a privilege it is to have Cyrilly and Jason in here. And I want to ask you guys one question. Uh, what is it, that, what is it that you, about what you do that you love? Hmm. Good question. Um, I think it's being able to express our culture, our stories and observations from our point of view to our to our people, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's about expression and when you get to do it often and you know that people are ignited and feel empowered when they hear your stuff, it's like, yeah, well, I'm coming back again to do it. Yeah. I'm in love. Yeah, yeah exactly. Wow. And the people, the people love, they love, they, the people, they just love laughing and they just love dancing. So, uh, um, mm. I mean, why chuck that away to, to go and fight? <laughs> <laughs> and look at your point of view too, Jason. Yeah, I... I Geez, it's a that's a big question, brother. Um, but I guess well, I love I love doing the work that we do because we add um, a real strong um, human spiritual level to the world, mm. yep. and you know to not be. P- for us not to be um, allowed or able to contribute to a world landscape mm. is criminal. And yeah. not long ago, we weren't given that chance or opportunity to do it. So, you know, look, I acknowledge your new bard and I acknowledge my grandparents and you know, our elders and yeah. every, everyone else um, who oh, provided, you know, a platform open, they bang down doors mm-hmm. for us to um, go in there and, and I guess, um, make change, mm-hmm. make change. And that's something that, you know, I love doing. Yep, and yep. I, love go- I, I love being able to go into institutions. I love disrupting them. Yep. I, I, I love changing them. Mm-hmm. And I absolutely love doing um, our people's story. Yep. That's something that I, I love, the, that's what I do all the time. And, um, and also, I love being able to put on um, entertainment performances yeah, yeah. that our people are going to enjoy. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And that's, that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, love that's, that. that's beautiful. That's brilliant. That's beautiful, you guys. Yeah. Uh, you, did a, um, you did a play last year, last month, that was shown at the Mould House. Yeah. Yeah, so I went to that. Within theatre. Yeah, you saw yeah. the return. Yeah. So I, 
Oh, yes, check that out too. I was going to ask you guys, what's new for you guys as well? Well, uh, I, I went and saw Jason's play and I just thought, I just thought, wow, he's on, he's on the right track. I've got to go. Um, I might have to write a song about that. Mm. Oh. Boom. Wow. So that's, that's how uh, influenced he is with his ideas and, wow. Thanks, and where you go. That's Far beautiful. Out, man. Yeah. yeah, powerful story. Yep. And it was about the return of... Uh, our museum and yep. historical pieces mm. yeah. of us mm. and returning it, taking it from the museums and all that, all the sort of locked up places they have us mm. and returning it to, Back to their proper cultural place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it's putting a human and putting a name to things that were taken from us and yeah. they, they used formulas and policy and legislation <laughs> to do yeah. some pretty horrible things towards us and, mm-hmm. and you know, at the beginning of mankind, I guess, in this colonial um, um, setting, um, they didn't think we were going to be here today. We weren't not meant to be here talking to you people listening to us now. We're not meant to be here today. Yeah. That's what they all thought and, and obviously we proved them really, really wrong but back at that, those early, um, early times, um, we were lucky to survive. Yep. You know, really, really lucky to survive, you know, and the, this, the story was all about eugenics. The story was all, it was all, it was all about grave robbing. It's all, it's all about... Um, wow. Um, it was all, also about um, identity crisis. There was also... Um, there was and much, much more involved. And, and, uh, and in essence, it's yep. a snapshot of what this country is. And the, and the weird thing is... And the weird thing is um, those white fellas that were taking care of the black fellas, uh, that would have been uh, just at the beginning where the killing stopped. Mm. So, so what I'm saying is that um, the white fellas didn't turn on the white fellas that were ter- uh, taking care of the black fellas. But a year before, they would have, because they were killing them the white fellas that were taking care of black fellas. And then when something happened and then um, white fellas started taking care of the black fellas and the white fellas couldn't go in and kill the white fellas that were taking care of the black fellas, when that stopped, they couldn't stop the survival of Aboriginal people by the white fellas who were taking care of us. Mm. Mm. Because the killing fields were everywhere, mm. yeah. They were, so, so, uh, um, and but there were a lot of white fellas that got murdered who helped us. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, not too many. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. <laughs> not, not, not too many, but, but, but it did happen. Mm. Mm. And so, if it happened once again, it's going to happen again. And so that means that they have to change their, they have to scrub their idea of good blacks and bad blacks. That does not exist. Mm. It never has. Do you reckon, do you reckon there'll ever be, will there ever be peace in this country, Bart? Will it be? If they get rid of um, the, the old technique of Take it. It's yours. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. And I just want to say um, big ups to Jason and Kira Lee. Thank you so much, you fellas. This Shirley. is our second episode. Yeah, yeah, that's Shirley Hood, mate. Right. Shirley. Shirley, sorry. Shirley Hood's in the hood. In the house. In the hood. And, and what's next for you guys? Um, oh, lots of different things going on at the moment. We've got NADOC coming up. Oh, yes, NADOC. But, um, Happy NADOC too, everyone. Yeah. Brr, um, I'm in a show that's in Ballarat at the moment. It's about the, it's called Extinction. It's about the uh, tiger quoll. And I had a look at, like, the history of around Ballarat and stuff. Oh. And it's like, yeah, Ballarat, Ballarat. That's where yeah. that, from the tiger quoll. And yeah. wow. that, that's become extinct. And then we, like, looked at it and it was like, out of that area, like in the Western Districts, there was not a mission built wow. in that area. That was just open killing fields, like you said, oh, yeah. but yeah, in that okay. gold area. So, you know, always that. thinking of um, 
Jaja Warong mob yeah, up he, there. You give me goosebumps, sis, because I'm, you know, <laughs> when, when, as soon as you, you said about the quoll and, you know, I remember I was sitting down there with, with um, Mr Gary Murray and, you know, talk, talking culture and politics and all hey, that type of that. thing. And, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at love photo. Ya. We're looking at photos, you know, and, you know, I love looking at historical photos or photos of yesterday and I was looking at the, um, you know, always fascinated and interested in, in body art, you know, or body markings that are on mob. And, and anyway, I'm, I'm, we're looking at this, um, you know, the, all the, these strong warriors standing there, real strong there, you know, in front of, the, in front of camp and they had the um, all painted up and they looked deeper and deeper and once, as we were looking deeper into it, the sort of penny dropped and we looked at them and said, man, those quals that you're talking about, man, they had like dots Painted yes. all over their body oh, wow. and, 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 and and painted on on, the, on their chest. This is how our people, cuz. Yep, and, yep. and and also then then I looked at it further and I was saying, Gary, look look at the legs. All those legs of these fellas. And what they had, they had white, like a white stripe going straight down the legs, which is a dead um, is a mirror of that animal, man. So that wow. is totem, it's part of our the culture, it's the our cult. law, wow. it's um, it's part of who um, a lot of people are on that um, the western side of this this mm. place. Mm. Wow! Brr. Wow! It's like it's like we're looking at um, a, a, a book cover, and but it's enough to explain what's in the book. Mm. 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 Uh, that's how we get back to our culture. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's funny, eh? Because you do, you know, if people would have asked us. Years ago, like, I got Jamal up at home in Northern Territory. If they were to ask, where's your Bible? The first thing they say is, there to there. Mm. Mm. Earth to the, the sky. From the land to the sky. That's our Bible. Mm. We don't mm. have a Bible. It's just written. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's, that's it. Right. That's our church. That's our church. And like to thank Everybody. Jason yep. and Shira Lee and Uncle Bart. Second episode, unbelievable. Yep. yep. Pleasure. And what an honour and pleasure and thank you guys so much, eh? Thank we've got, you. We've got eight minutes. Sorry, yeah. people, but we love it. We're going to leave you. We're going to leave you, yeah. And thank you so much for having us today. It's been really great. And, like, for all the mob out there, all the listeners, yeah, have fun. Keep it in the cosmos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.